Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Death toll rises to at least 19 in avalanche in India's Uttarakhand state. 10 years of Afghan economic growth reversed in just 12 months, says UN report. And Sri Lanka's top court allows proceedings against former President Kotabaya Rajapaksa. And now for all the details. Rescuers in India's Uttarakhand state recovered more bodies of mountaineers on Friday, bringing the confirmed death toll to at least 19 from an avalanche in the Himalayan region. Search operations to find 10 others were still underway till the last reports came in. The death toll in an avalanche in the Himalayas rose to at least 19. Chief of India's northern Uttarakhand state, Pushkar Singh Dhami, said on Friday. A group consisting of 34 trainees preparing for high-altitude navigation who were accompanied by seven instructors was caught in the avalanche on Tuesday. The group had been making its way back from a mountain peak, Draupadi Kadanda 2, at 5,670 meters when the avalanche struck. Dhami said rescue operations were going on continuously in the area to recover bodies and search for the survivors. Inclement weather forced rescuers to continue their operations from a different helipad in Harsil, a police official said. The four dead bodies recovered in the first day. They came to the Harsil helipad. After that, they came to the hospital in the district hospital. Because the weather was very bad, that's why the ALS didn't get their sort. In Uttarakasi, the knowledge of the Uttarakasi is now the 19th बॉडी हैं वो अभी तक रिकवर्ड हो गई हैं मिली हैं और रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन लगातार चल रहा है। The group mainly consisted of trainees from the Nehru Institute of Mountaineering, a well-known state-run mountaineering school. In 2021, at least eight people died and 384 were rescued after a glacier broke, triggering an avalanche in the hill state known for adventurous treks. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has called opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan the biggest fraudster alleging that he wants the country to face a similar situation like Sri Lanka. He warned that if Khan once again comes into power, the country will be destroyed. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday alleged that opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan wanted Pakistan to face a similar situation like Sri Lanka and told reporters that decisions of previous government led by Khan were responsible for the current economic situation. Shahbaz said he is addressing the press conference to sensitize the nation against the biggest liar and fraudster in the country, alleging that Imran could sacrifice the country for his personal benefits. He warned that if Khan once again comes into power, the country will be destroyed. You जो जिसकी हर बात बेबुनियाद अपनी जात से उसकी उससे ताल्लुक होता है अगर अपनी जात है तो उसके लिए वो हर चीज कर गुजरेगा This comes as Khan has urged his supporters to be ready for the second large scale demonstration in capital Islamabad after October 9 to demand that National Assembly be dissolved and general elections be held at an early date. The former PM has been leading rallies since his dismissal demanding snap elections which the ruling coalition has rejected, saying voting will be held as scheduled later next year. The incumbent government has vowed that it will mobilize the army and station troops if Imran Khan calls for Islamabad March. Moving on, 
Members of the Mutahida Qaumi Movement, MQM, staged a protest in Canada recently to highlight atrocities against their party workers and the Muhajir community in Pakistan. They also demanded removal of ban on their political activities and on speeches of MQM founder leader Altaf Hussain in Pakistan. Members of the Mutahida Qaumi Movement, MQM, staged a demonstration recently in Canada's Mississauga city to demand international community's intervention to stop human rights violations against the party and the Muhajir community in Pakistan. The demonstrators highlighted state atrocities against the MQM, a mainstream political party of the Mohajirs, including the recent killing of three MQM workers and enforced disappearance of former lawmaker Nisan Panwar in Pakistan. They also demanded removal of ban from they also demanded removal of ban against MQM founder leader Altaf Hussein's speeches in Pakistan. <laughs> मारवा अदालत जो साथी हमारे खातल हुए हैं और साहब का हक पर एमएन है निसाब पनो भाई सीनियर कारकुन वफा पर साथी उनकी जो गैर कानूनी तौर पर उनको लापता किया गया है जवाब में जब ये तमाम कानूनी रास्ते अपनाती है एमकेएम कायद तहरीक की सरबराई में तो जो ادارے ہیں وہ قائد تحریک کے گھر کو جلا دیتے ہیں ساتھیوں کی سربریزہ لاشیں پھینکتے ہیں और ये पैगाम देते हैं कि तुम्हारे लिए दूसरा कानून है और हमारे पंजाब के लोगों के लिए दूसरा कानून है MQM has dominated Pakistan's largest city Karachi's politics since the 1980s when security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s Altaf Hussein sought asylum in the United Kingdom even from exile in London Hussein has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's military and often blames it of using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country as Afghanistan continues to face a slump in the economy after the Taliban takeover, the fragile economic growth which took 10 years to accumulate has been reversed in just 12 months, according to a recent UN report. It projects that up to 97% of the population may be at risk of sinking below the poverty line by next year. The United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, has said that the Afghan economy has suffered a catastrophic fall in the last year, projecting that up to 97% of the population may be at risk of sinking below the poverty line by next year unless a response to the country's political and economic crisis is urgently launched. According to the UN report that was released on Wednesday, the Afghan economy lost around 5 billion US dollars after the Taliban took control and had a gross domestic product of only about 20 billion US dollars before Taliban took control of the country. The report added that already declining regular economy as opposed to the black market lost nearly 5 billion dollars after August 2021 and is reversing in 12 months what had taken 10 years to accumulate. As per a UNDP analysis, prohibiting women from working could lead to a loss of up to 1 billion US dollars or up to 5% of the nation's GDP. The report also revealed a disturbing and consistent pattern of human rights violations by the <laughs> Taliban in line with the previous findings of the High Commissioner for Human Rights that continue to take place in the war-torn country. The international community has made ensuring human rights, especially rights of girls and women, as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. Afghanistan's assets, which have remained frozen due to sanctions, have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's top court has granted permission for proceedings against former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, the rights group which filed the case against him said in a statement on Friday. The case calls for accountability for the island nation's leadership for its worst financial crisis in more than seven decades. Sri Lanka's Supreme Court has granted permission for proceedings against former President Gota by Rajapaksa. The rights group Transparency International, which filed the case against him, said in a statement on Friday, calling for accountability for the island nation's leadership for its worst financial crisis in more than seven decades. The court also agreed to allow proceedings against the country's former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, former Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa 
and two of its former central bank governors. The South Asian island of 22 million people is battling its worst economic strife in 70 years as the debt crisis has led to an acute dollar shortage to pay for essential imports of food, fuel and medicine a plunge in the rupee currency and runaway inflation. The top court has ordered the Auditor General will have to conduct an audit and submit a report by November 30 on the decisions by Rajapaksa administration in respect to setting the value of the Sri Lankan rupee at rupees 203 against the US dollar and delay in seeking IMF assistance, among others. Gotabaya Rajapaksa, who was the then president, fled the country in July after a public uprising over the months-long economic crisis. And the new president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, has now an uphill task to put the country's heavy debt back on track, maintain political stability and finalize a $2.9 billion bailout plan from the International Monetary Fund. Moving on. The UN rights body on Thursday renewed the mandate of a UN office to collect and preserve evidence of alleged wartime human rights crimes in Sri Lanka despite opposition from the government and allies, including China. The UN Human Rights Council on Thursday renewed the mandate of a UN office to collect and preserve evidence of alleged wartime human rights crimes in Sri Lanka, despite opposition from the government and allies, including China. During a vote on the draft resolution, 20 nations voted in favour in the 47-member council. Seven voted against it, including China and Pakistan, and 20 abstained, including India, Japan, Nepal and Qatar. China and several other countries supported Sri Lanka's view that the monitoring amounted to meddling. Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said the country categorically rejects the resolution presented without its consent despite efforts to engage with the main sponsors. Sri Lanka categorically rejects the draft resolution HRC stroke slash 51 slash L1 presented without our consent despite our effort to engage with the main sponsors. While this resolution may meet the objective of advancing the domestic political consideration of the sponsors, it manifestly up unhelpful to Sri Lanka. We call on the members of this council to reject it by a vote. The resolution renews the mandate to observe Sri Lanka's progress towards establishing a credible investigation into alleged war crimes during the civil war that ended in 2009 and promote demilitarization of its north and eastern regions. The UN Refugee Agency estimated in 2010 that the final stages of the civil war had internally displaced around 300,000 Tamils. The renewed resolution also called for the government to investigate and prosecute former and current public officials who triggered the country's worst financial crisis. India's Jammu and Kashmir has received 16.2 million tourists this year, the most in 75 years, which Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government has said is a sign of economic development in the strife-torn region. India's Jammu and Kashmir has received 16.2 million tourists this year, the most since British colonial rule ended in 1947, which Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government said was a sign of economic development in the strife-torn region. Known for its snow-topped Himalayan mountains, fast-flowing rivers, Mughal-era gardens, alpine meadows and houseboats around the beautiful Dal Lake, the Union Territory has seen a resurgence in domestic tourism since most COVID-19 restrictions ended this year. Piyush Goel, India's Trade and Industries Minister, wrote on Twitter, Kashmir coming alive. He said the government's transformative initiatives and reforms to uplift Jammu and Kashmir have given a major thrust to tourism. The vast majority of visitors are domestic tourists, as foreign tourists need a special pass to visit most parts of Jammu and Kashmir. The record tourists' arrival are a boom for PM Modi's government, which withdrew the region's status as a state in 2019, and reforms it said were aimed at integrating it with the rest of the country. Along with horticulture and agriculture, tourism is an important industry for Kashmir, accounting for more than 7% for its economy, according to government data. Last month, a top government official inaugurated a multi-screen cinema hall in Srinagar, the largest city in Kashmir, more than two decades after cinemas were closed there due to threats by terror groups affiliated to Pakistan-based terror outfits. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAJNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAJNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.